In this video, we are going to learn the massive data that are mostly unstructured. We are also going to provide some examples of big data, classify data based on the degree of organization, and explain its various characteristics. Then we are going to learn what most organizations do to extract valuable information from this enormous size of data. Let us first review the concept of data. Data is defined in Oxford languages as the quantities characters, or symbols on which operations are performed by a computer, which may be stored and transmitted in the form of electrical signals and recorded on magnetic, optical, or mechanical recording media. Now that we know what data is, let us tackle big data. This term refers to a collection of data that is huge in volume, yet growing exponentially with time. It is generated at a very large scale and it cannot be stored or processed by any traditional data storage or processing units. Big data is used by many multinational companies to process and analyze in order to uncover insights and improve the business of many organizations. The process of collecting and analyzing the large volume of data sets to discover useful hidden patterns and other information like customer choices market trends that can help organizations make more informed and customer-oriented business decisions is called data analytics. In short, data analytics is the extraction of useful information from the data by building all possible relations among various data. To help in managing big data better, machine learning is used. Just to review, when we say machine learning, we mean a software application that can learn to increase their accuracy for the expecting outcomes. It is used to train machines by feeding them data sets and making algorithms that enable machines in problem solving and decision making. The algorithms improved over time as they have the ability to learn from past experience. Some benefits of application of machine learning to data analytics is finding solutions for problems like cost reduction, time saving, and lowering the risk in decision making. Let's take a look at some examples of big data. Then later, we'll have some examples of machine learning activities on big data. Examples of big data are the following. Stock exchange that generates new trade data per day. Social media sites that store data like photo and video uploads, messages, comments, and posts into its database. Jet engine that generate large data in a few minutes of flight time. A university that has many students and an ocean of data. Some universities are now able to use analytics and data visualizations to show patterns of students that aids its operations, recruitment, and retention efforts. And weather sensors and satellites deployed all around the globe to contribute to weather forecasting. Here are some of the activities of machine learning in our everyday life. Did you notice the song recommendations that you get on digital music, podcast, and video streaming service like on Spotify? Machine learning does that for you. Another example is Uber. Uber generates and uses a huge amount of data like drivers and vehicles information, locations, and every trip from every vehicle. All this data is analyzed and then used to predict supply, demand, location of drivers, and fares that will be set for every trip. In addition, Uber optimally match your ride to other passengers to minimize detours. Financial institutions determine if a transaction is fraudulent or not. Artificial intelligence is used to check what types of transactions are considered fraudulent. At this point, let's focus on the different types of data based on the degree of organization. First is structured data. It is any data that can be stored, accessed, and processed in the form of fixed format. It is data with a high degree of organization. This table created using a spreadsheet is an example of structured data. The table structure makes this type of data ready for analysis. For example, we could filter the table for employee living in a specific address. Another example of structured data are the comma-separated value or CSV files. 
If you look closely to this image, it follows a structure that can easily be converted into a table. These values are separated by a comma, so they can easily be related to a table. For example, every second value in a row indicates a timestamp. Therefore, structured data has a well-defined structure. It follows a consistent order and it is defined in such a way that it can be easily accessed and used by a person or a computer. Second is a semi-structured data. An example of this data is a hypertext markup language or HTML file. It is a file with text that has some structure like head, title, paragraph, etc. These structures are defined by tags. Texts in it are organized with those tags. For example, title tag instructs the browser what to show on the title bar. H1 tag stands for heading 1 that commands the browser to display the text with that specific format. These tags organize the file and what will be displayed on the browser. But on a different web page, the number and type of tags used might be completely different. Therefore, this data contains structured in form, but it is not as defined similar to what appears on a table. Third is unstructured data. It is defined as any data with no predefined organizational form or specific format. This can be data of any file format which is not nicely put into a spreadsheet or some semi-structured data format. Examples of unstructured data are any file type returned by Google search like JPEG, PNG, MP3, MP4, PDF, or any other file type. The common characteristic of these files is there is no structure on its content. Organizations have a wealth of data and the vast majority of all data created today is unstructured. For humans, unstructured data is typically easy to consume. For a computer, it is difficult to analyze and interpret because it has no degree of organization. With the advent of artificial intelligence, machine learning specifically, there is now a lot of progress in processing and essentially teaching a machine how to read and understand unstructured data. For example, the fields of natural language processing that allows humans to interact with computers and computer vision that allows computers to recognize objects from images and videos are witnessing significant breakthroughs at the moment. Now, let us highlight the distinct characteristics of big data. The first attribute is volume. This relates to the size of the data. The reason why it is called as big data in the first place is because it has enormous size of data. Consider the number of times the React button is clicked on social media sites, the number of messages generated on instant messaging apps, and the number of posts on blogging sites. Developers record these unimaginable amounts of data and use big data technologies. The second aspect of big data is variety. It refers to heterogeneous sources and the nature of data, which may be structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. It may be traditional data like last name, first name, birth date, and address found in a table. It may also be in the form of emails, photos, videos, PDFs, audios, offline document records, online sources, etc. The third characteristic is veracity. It means the degree of reliability of the data. In an ocean of data, some are irrelevant. Therefore, there is a need to filter the big data to find which are trustworthy and translate from uncertainties and inconsistencies in order to be useful in an organization. The fourth aspect is value. Big data is massive, but not all pieces will be relevant. Therefore, it is not just the amount of data that we store or process that will count. It is actually the amount of valuable data that needs to be stored, processed, and analyzed to find insights. Last, but definitely not the least attribute, is velocity. It refers to the speed of generation and processing of data. It is said to be the major aspect of big data. It plays a major role in extracting information. 
If data moves fast and they are available for consumption on demand, then data will flow smoothly and continuously in business processes, networks, social media sites, and in any organizations. With this, we come to an end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge on big data. If you have any query related to this lesson, then please write to me in the comment section below and I will respond to you as early as possible.